uh, for four, five, six, and then seven. So um, there's various programs where the builders also offering buyers incentives to, to attract, um, you know, buyers that, that would like to make the move in this market. Um, I've personally been in the business since 1994, um, and I've seen a lot of different markets come. I actually changed from builder rep to agent in 2008, the great year of 2008, <laughs> when I went from here to here. Um, so I've seen I've seen the different market shifts. I think that right now, um, because of most buyers are kind of they all react, react in, in in the same uh, in the same direction. So when the market was crazy, they were willing to overpay by a lot. And um, I'm a licensed agent, so I had listings like that where it is worth, in my opinion, 375, and we put it on market for 390 and. 475, you know, so we've had that market and, and so everybody's kind of following that same direction. And now, um, unfortunately, it goes in both ways. So now um, there's many reasons not to buy. So we're focusing on the reasons to buy. And the way we see it is right now, there's, you know, with new construction, there's more availability um, in, in terms of like production. You can get things done. Um, we also do GC work. So we're seeing a lot of investors actually wanting to do projects right now. They're really all coming out. So compared to traditional buyers that are like really hesitant still, the people that are kind of looking ahead 12 to 18 months, they want to get stuff out on the ground. So we're seeing a lot of activity um, with with general contractor work that the builder does for, for investors. So it is happening. Please. What's your tax rate and condo fees? <clears throat> so the tax rate right now, and it's, it's, it's going to probably change for everybody because the values went down, as you probably know, in Travis County and in Williams County. So right now it's um, I think two point one five. Um, it's busy. There's no mud or anything. It's in the city. So you have city of Austin, uh, Travis County, and then ACC district and hospital district, uh, and then of course Austin ISD. Um, but but because they made adjustments in values that you've probably seen your property owners do, that usually we'll see an increase in tax rate in October um, because they have to make up for that. They don't do it the other way, right? <laughs> they don't reduce it dramatically when the values go up, and when they go down, you usually make some adjustment. Um, so, and then the condo fee. So, the, the the purpose of the developer was to keep them very low, um, and so there's no really expensive amenities in the community. There's like a rooftop deck. There's um, there's like dog area and stuff, but it's nothing that's really expensive. So, for the townhomes, uh, they're expecting three hundred dollars per month, and then from the for the condos, around two twenty five to two fifty. Uh, those are flats. Um, basically, um, they're in a large building, uh, ground floor parking, and then two residential levels above. Um, and uh, what, what I see a lot is people, they think it's like an apartment, but it's concept wide, it is, but, but design wise, it isn't. I mean, they're, they're very large, very spacious, 10 foot ceilings, large windows. And people go in, like, wow, this is actually nicer than a home in some cases because you have large living space and, and, and a really nice open flow. Um, so, if you all ever want to come out and visit, uh, please reach out and I'd love to show you. Go ahead. Do you guys let uh, realtors hold any of these uh, completed ones open? Absolutely. Or so we, thanks for asking. I wanted to bring that up. So uh, we actually um, we have a model home there um, that's furnished. And um, I've been doing open houses um, and I'd love for anybody to take them off my plate. <laughs> you know, so if you want to do them, um, we, we do some, we see some activity there. Uh, if you put your sides on stuff, you, you get some, some activity. And and uh, I'm an agent myself, so I mean, I, I respect you all for what you do. I mean, so we, we don't have any interest in not giving you an opportunity. So if you find somebody that comes out and they want to, want to be a buyer there, you can re represent them. You get 6% on the completed homes. Um, and, uh, and we do our part. So we're very, and we've always been like really pro agents because we know that you all bring us the business. And I'm an agent myself, so I'm, I've done that you know, with resales. I worked with builders when I was a, a buyer's representative and all that. So I know it's really critical. And that's why we do most of our communication actually with, with agents because that's 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 the source. Um, and it's always been, I think it always will be. Um, but yeah, so if, if anybody wants to do that uh, or just learn about the community, you come out and visit. Um, and I'd love to show you what we got. Um, there's not a whole lot of inventory um, in, in the construction center of Austin and the price range is attractive. So it's um, from 435 on the two bedrooms and then uh, in the high 500s on, on the townhomes, which are three bedrooms to have baths and um, have a private yard 
the car garage, all the good stuff, all the you know, people are looking for. Um, go ahead. What kind of buyers are you seeing? Uh, so we're seeing a lot of folks that are in tech. Um, so um, mostly between 30 and 40. Um, and, and that's, uh, I've done several projects in Central Austin and that's usually, they like to be in Central Austin because uh, especially over in ML, uh, MLS Area 5, it's, um, it's very laid back. Uh, you get around really easily. It's not as congested as West Side, and um, and with our location, um, people that work at the domain, for example, they could jump on 183. They don't have to get on 35 because we're at MLK and 183 just inside 183. So uh, it's easy to get to the domain to Northwest Austin, uh, but it also leads off to the airport. It's about 12 to 14 minutes depending on traffic. Um, and then people even want to go south. You could go uh, 183 to Ben White and then cut in and bypass uh, the main. Uh, I-35 for you where we have the congestion. So, but mostly people that want to be in that area, they love the kind of the vibe of, of East Austin. I personally do too. I mean, I, I've, uh, I have a condo down in East Austin myself. I, it's, it's a great place and there's a lot of cool things going on. What is the school district? The school district? Uh, it's, it's Austin ISD. So this is Austin proper. Uh, and, and so about Austin ISD, so um, when my kids were growing up, uh, we were actually over at Leandro ISD. And, and very often the focus for families is that, but but I must say that uh, when I did some research, there are actually some pretty cool schools in, in Austin um, that are like magnet programs um, and, and preparatory schools, and then also like there's the UT um, elementary school over on East 6th Street. Uh, so people, like when you're in the city, it, it's more on the parents to find the focus, to find the right school for the kids first year. It's, it's a given, you know, you move to to a neighborhood and schools are there so it's, it's a very different uh different setup but but there are some really good schools some of like searching for them uh within the school district so it's very large and um so yeah and so um just one more thing also if, if you do have investors or or people that own land um so uh the gentleman i work with nick he actually he built the crystal falls you know the, the custom homes um People that want to do like a small like fourplex or two fourplexes, we've had those um, where they just want to actually build some of the land. It's a really good time to build right now because material costs have gone down, trades are available, and uh, we're pushing the pricing all the time, you know, to get them uh, adjusted. Because I must say, I mean, like during the height of the market, I mean, um, lumber was like three times the price it was pre-pandemic. And then also a lot of trades would overcharge and not show up. I mean, they could because there was so much work out there. So there's been an adjustment. Um, so um, in my opinion, right now, like if you have an investor that owns land looking at building something, uh, we could work, work with you on that too, because that's uh, the builder does a lot of that GC work for folks that, that just want something built on a, on a cost plus basis because the cost level is lower now. Um, that's that's a really uh, good opportunity for someone to build on the land if you have somebody. My five awesome. minutes. Um, Thank you. And I, um, if anybody wants to give me a business card, I have two uh, cards to raffle out. Um, I'll just hand this out. Don't put your card in the chat. 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 We had it late. We started late. We had another issue. This was not the thing that. It's just this is the way. It was. My original. So, yep. Oh, there's one more. Just waiting. What's it? Yeah, yeah. Can you show this far around? All right. Um, and we've done a couple of outdoor things. But so thank you for asking. So, um, you want to do the honors? Anyone? You're going to do the honors. I'm going to do the honors. How many are we? Two. All right. And the first one is Tony. 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 You're a, win, you're a winner. You're a winner. Okay. Hey. Hey.
And the second winner is Katie Wright. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks again, and um, uh, I'd love to see you out there. And if you have any questions, let me know. And um, thanks for letting me uh, uh, come and visit today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I good? Yeah. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Before I forget, everybody know that JB will be here in a little while. We're doing a communications NLT live uh, 11 to 12. Okay. You're all going to be here? Some of you are going to be here? Okay. Uh, I'll just open with that. Otherwise, I'd forget. Here to talk about the cost of superhero run. Um, has anybody been to that before? I know a couple of you have. Super, thanks. Any of you wonder what it is? CASA cost is an acronym for Court Appointed Special Advocates. These are advocates appointed by the court to um, advocate for children who are facing any number of issues from neglect to abuse to any number of other things. Um, it's a nationwide program. You have local affiliates. So locally, we have CASA of Travis County, of Williamson County, of uh, Central Texas, I believe, I think even Hayes County. So in Austin, they do this CASA Superhero Run. It's the 14th year in a row. Um, this year and last year, it was at the Circuit of the Americas. It's a lot of fun. It's a fun run, right? You can walk, you can run. You don't have to do any of that. They have a little festival there as well. But it's notable because uh, folks bring out their kids and everybody dresses up like superheroes if you want to. Uh, you don't have to. Um, and do the run or just hang out and, and support the cause. So. Uh, we were last year's largest team. We had a great time. You can see some of it there. There's Molly. Molly, where are your tights? <laughs> <laughs> Where's your cape? I guess I should have said cape. She always wears her cape. She always has her cape. So I'm here to encourage all of you to come out. If you can't come out that day, if you would still please join our team. I'm going to send out an email in a little while. Just join the team. You don't have to. We were last year's largest team. You don't even have to go. Um, but I'd like for us to win those largest team awards because it shows that we care and shows that we're out there advocating. We have the uh, Design Center Canva for you promoting this, sitting in the events category of Design Center. All you've got to do is what you normally do in Design Center, get it out there and, and create some awareness for these guys. It's a wonderful organization. On that note, we've got a special guest today, Samantha Caraveo with Premier Nationwide, who uh, is going to... Uh, spend a couple minutes uh, telling you about some personal experience she has with the CASA uh, program. Samantha. Good morning, JB family. Thank you guys so much for giving me a few minutes of your time this morning. So I wanted to share that um, to start off with, I had no idea that this program was in the state of Texas until Tony sent out the email about the fun run. And it just brought back a wave of emotions because as a young child, Growing up in Indiana, um, in middle school, I was a beneficiary to the program. So my mom, um, she was a single mom of four kiddos. She had passed away, and that resulted in me growing up in foster homes um, and primarily group homes, So, which is how I ended up with the CASA. So I just wanted to share a little bit of my story and kind of explain what CASA means, because you kind of think, what's a court-appointed special advocate? And I always say, you don't know what you don't know, right? So I wanted to share, like, her name is Marcia, and I feel like she was, to share a little bit about my story, she is um, a godsend to me. She was um, really a huge part of my life. So growing up in the group home for several years, a lot of the kids, some of them were, were similar to me, where there was just no family um, at all. And then some of them were pulled from their family where, it just wasn't safe for them to be in their homes. So there was visitation. So their family would come on the weekends and that was a huge deal. Not every weekend, I think it was one, once a month, um, that, but that was a big deal. And so if you didn't have family to come, it was, you can imagine it would be a really sad time. Um, so Marsha, for me, she came, she drove an hour each way, you guys. She was that family for me. She was a consistent, constant in my life. Um, she was really just there to, she loved on me, um, and just listened and she was there and we remained in one another's life, even through adulthood. She's since passed and 
I talked to her um, she had one adult son and she, he had shared that she saved the letters that that we had sorry that we had written back and forth um over the years like all those years so we're talking like nearly like 30 years and so that was so we just had she, this profound relationship she was a huge part of my life so that is what a court of my special advocate is um so i just really wanted to sorry i didn't plan to get didn't emotional but i just wanted to share and bring some clarity to the program um, and what that acronym means so no pressure but i hope you guys come out <laughs> <laughs> and just um like tony said you don't have to run like um, i'm gonna be out there just walking um and just come out and support so Thank you, Samantha. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Samantha. That's wonderful that she did that. And she did that in every office. We've, we've swung around over the weeks to uh, to hear. The, the, the event is in a month. I'm going to send out that email in a little while. Please do think about joining our team. Um, we rarely get an opportunity to kind of bring home what these events and these organizations we get involved with are really all about. Um, so that was amazing. For, Samantha came to me and offered to, to do this. So uh, thanks. And um, I'll see you at 11, I hope. Okay. All right. See, I cried today and Ken didn't make me cry. It was something else. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I really joke about that, y'all. He does not make me cry every day. <laughs> Although, we have, shed, I mean, we have shed tears. I have seen Ken cry, and it's horrible. <laughs> Don't do it. Okay? I'm strong. He's, he cries, it's over. Everyone's over. Uh, this was left here a couple weeks ago. It's a computer cord. So if anybody's missing this, I'm going to put it in my office. So don't walk away. So if you hear anybody that's uh, missing a cord, it was left back here. Um, I also want to say um, our square one people are here today. They're on their second week. We are doing a property tour, y'all, but we're going to do it after JB's um, class. Okay. So we got it's close by. So it's going to be real quick after the class that Tony and JB is going to do. Okay. All right. So let's see what happened last week. We had listings. Kim Shelton. Not only did she list this last week, she sold it. One point four million dollars. We can laugh. We do that too. Um, don't ever feel too embarrassed to come to us, y'all. Like I've done some stupid things. So <laughs> I forgot for that. We're all the same though. We don't want anybody, anybody leaving here saying, I I'm lost. I feel stupid. No, no one, no one in this room is stupid. Systems are stupid. Okay. I got three to do one day. I got three systems. So I know trouble, trouble with systems. So come in, see me, um, and we'll get it all situated. All right. Who's ready to spin the wheel? Hey, I won $5 last week. I know. I haven't actually, where do I have to take that to cash it in? 
Again, that's a pen question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take care of it for you. Swan, I see him Swan here. Yeah. Come on down. I'm going to take all the pens off and put it where the one is. Oh, it's laying on the one. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Ed, I seen you walk in. Finally. There you are. I thought I saw her. I thought I did too. Uh, Ken's on the list, but he don't spin. <laughs> Deborah, <laughs> I think Deborah gave Okay, can I say something? Sure. Okay. I have an assistant, Ruby Marino, if you know her, she's gorgeous and you know all that. And she put all of the paperwork together so efficiently on her vacation and we closed on a Friday with all that. It would have never happened on that Friday. The day after the lady who owned the property passed away. Oh, if she what? wouldn't have done all that, we would not have this deal. Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> this is going to Ruby where we know. Yes. <laughs> so that's insane. <laughs> Betty Riley. Nice to Betty. Now, Melinda Caldwell. I did see Melinda. 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 Campos. <laughs> It's on camera. He only said fun card is fun. You come in and you're in the hot round. I've been there before. All right, Crystal Valentine. Uh, Andrew Medina. Monkey told us. <laughs> and you gotta show those socks dollars. to everybody. Let's see your socks. Those are some. Those are some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Molly, come on. Come on. Molly, I like to spin. <laughs> Heaven. <laughs> Yay, Kevin. <laughs> He's on his best behavior. His wife is here. <laughs> you can introduce yourself to Kevin to be quiet. <laughs> but don't tell everything you know about him, okay? <laughs> Kevin Prezan. Oh, yeah. He's not here, is he? I don't think so. Terry, Richard, I did see you. Terry. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. We can't skip the days that we're not here. So we, we do last week and this week. And Louis, Luis. Oh my gosh. Luis. 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 Last but not least, Ruby is on the list, but she's not here. But she she has another job as well. So yep. that is it. Congratulations, everybody! You got the good work.
It's Ken. It's Ken. I was like, who is it? It's who is it? You know what I do? Ken. You know what I do not see this week? What I do not see? Google reviews. Oh. No, no, they're up they're next. Are Shush. they? Yes. I didn't we see them. Switched it up. Yeah. We switched so this Although, where did they go? Focus yeah. farming. <laughs> Who's doing farming? Wow. I was like, two people? Really? <laughs> So, how are we getting business if we're not doing farming? Yeah. What's it mean? What's it mean? Crickets, crickets, people, drink some coffee. Get up. <laughs> um, so, I got some questions for you. If you guys are doing farming, how many max houses should you be farming? Anybody? Yeah. What'd you say? Three hundred. What'd you say, Ellie? Three hundred. Wow, he's drink. He's finally drinking coffee. Maybe it's the sugar. Three times. Oh, it's the sugar. Three hundred max. Okay. So out of that three. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, keep going. Keep going. People. People. Focus. So out of that group, focus in focus. <laughs> so out of that three hundred. How many should be sold within the year? Basically, one point seven. Three. Anybody? No. Yes. No. They said the back. I'm not hearing it. Yes. Swan. Say it louder. Swan. Yay. Thirty. I swear, I need to give out little chocolates or something. We we gotta. So, and then out of that. 30, how many should a single agent have sold? Oh, yes. Yes. Mara. Oh, Maya. Yes. How did you learn this? <laughs> okay. So, who's doing for me? We got three. I, I, oh, three. Oh. three. So, out of the three, how many are actually selling? Three. All three. All three. <laughs> so anyway, so the point of the the point of this is if you guys get out there and start farming your area. Do you guys know? I mean, you're the experts in your area. So choose an area that you're an expert in and do that farming. Get out there and do it. Right now is a great time to do the farming for the areas that you want, but you've got to be consistent. So once you start choosing an area, please be consistent. Don't start going all over the place and going up. Le oh, I'm an expert in Leander. You're not an expert in Leander. You can be an expert in a certain area, but- Of Leander. Yeah, of Leander, of, of whichever you choose. Don't let everybody go to Leander. <laughs> so, yes. Can you explain like what the different farming looks like? Because I think when you say farming, <laughs> There's so many different ways you can farm. It's, not, it's yeah. not one way. But. Yeah, it can be several different ways. You guys can door knock. You guys can cold call. You can send out quantum. I mean, do open houses in that area. Anything that you guys do, just make it consistent. Consistently staying in that area. Don't go to Leander and then jump over to Round Rock. If you want to be a farming in your specific area, stay in that specific area. Don't go, oh, I think I'm gonna do an open house in Round Rock, but I'm gonna farm in Leander. Does that work? I mean, so so anyway, that's my in Norm, focus. Norma, what do you have to add? Norma's got some. Well, I'd just like to add that we can also farm instead of a neighborhood or in addition to a neighborhood, a beach. Right, yeah. correct. Um, like, I'm farm. A, I'm a farm member farm. of an organization that fosters dogs. Right. All of those people hear from me all the time and they all know what I do. Or um, I've got horses. I'm going to say at least probably close to a third of my Facebook friends are horse people. So I consider my contacts with them on Facebook to be a form of farming. I keep in touch with them when I talk to them about horses. But then about every third time that I talk to them about horses, I send them something that I'm doing in regard to real estate. That's, um, that's the same thing. 
and more that's more productive than farming method, I think. I agree. So um, but if you guys need help with the phone or or targeting a certain area, get with any one of us. We'll be more than happy to help you with that. Um, get the like she says, do what you like to do, join groups, do all of those things to um, help your business. Don't be a secret agent. I see so many people out there that are secret agents. Now, when I first started, I could not have imagined, and I do champion school of real estate, I do some recruiting there. I couldn't imagine standing in front of you guys. I been, don't do that. So if you guys ever want practice with any one of us to do listing appointments, anything, farming, anything that you guys need, we're here to help you guys. So we're here to help with your business. And the last thing we want is for somebody to go, we didn't get the support that we needed because we're telling you all the time we're here to help. So that's what our motto is, helping people. And if we can't help you internally, then we don't expect you to help somebody externally. That's what I have for right now. All right. Andrea. All right, announcements this week. We have uh, Agent of the Week, Maida. Um, and we definitely see you working it. So congratulations. Um, she's sitting right over there. So if y'all see, go up and congratulate her after the sales meeting. Cool. Um, next in-person sales meeting, we have September 5th, September 19th, and October 10th. Sorry, it's October. What happened to January? <laughs> um, it's Memorial Day. When's Memorial Day? Yes. What date is Memorial Day? The fourth. Four. 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 Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just checking that we have the right date. Um, uh, calling today is going to be a little funky because we've got our class afterward and then we also have um, property tours. So if you all want for sale by owner numbers, just shoot me a text. Let me know that you'd like some numbers and I'll send them to you and you can get them done later this afternoon. Sound good? And then Friday will be the usual expired listing calling. So uh, let me know if you want to take part in that. And back to Ken. <laughs> you know what I didn't see? Google reviews. <laughs> so good job to David, Kelsey, Catherine got two. So good job out of you guys getting those Google reviews that I didn't see this morning. So. Um, keep it up with the Google reviews. If you guys, some of you that are newer or haven't heard, we have the QR codes on the Google reviews now. So if you need them, we've got plenty of cards we can give to you guys. Don't forget to hand them out during your closings or when you're out showing people property and whatnot. So um, good job keeping keeping up with the Google reviews. And uh, back to Andrea. <laughs> We have our two month connect uh, contact growth challenge going on right now. So uh, this month it's all about amplifying your reach. Um, post a buying or selling tip weekly on your social channels. Send a message to five centers of influence. What are centers of influence? Yes. So people that will refer you to reach out to those folks this week. Um, set up five meetings, invite them to coffee, invite them to lunch, invite them anywhere. Uh, connect with prospective clients on LinkedIn and share behind the scenes uh, content on your busy social media schedule. Okay. Look for opportunities to tag other people in your social posts and like and comment on other people's content daily. This really does help you get in front of more people than it's just on your friend list if you're out there commenting on other posts that you connect with all right next slide. um our tip tuesday uh this week is the most important things in life are the connections you make with other people um i mean this kind of speaks for itself right you're it's not about just looking to only talk about real estate to everybody it's those connections that you don't know necessarily how they're going to impact those people's lives in your life. It's about those connections, though, that really help you to be impactful in your uh, area, your neighborhood, your social group. 
it's those connections that really, really matter. So this week's challenge, build your sphere of influence um, with centers of influence. So by act actively being on your social media, this is another way to reach out to folks. Uh, Norma mentioned that she reaches out to, or she said that about thir a third of her folks on social media are horse people. That's her sphere. She's able to connect with people through that um, media outlet. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. There's TikTok. Um, David has been doing a phenomenal job on TikTok, creating really cool videos. I've seen some other folks with doing really cool videos as well. Um, just get that content out there, but it's not just pushing out content. It's also getting people to engage with that content. And then you engage them back. Because if you're not re-engaging back, it's not going to be as impactful. All right. So uh, that is this week's challenge. Social media ideas this week is what's a trend in homes that you don't think will stick around. And it's not ship lab, okay? It's not ship lab, y'all. Um, I did ship lab before Joanna Gaines ever thought about it. Okay. <laughs> Um, it might be the orange colors that are coming back from the 70s. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Avocado yeah. green. Can that come back? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. We had gold grass toilets. Uh, oh. Grass is coming back. What is it? Grass. Grass. Yeah. Grass is coming back. Uh, fresh grass. Do we think it's going to stick around? Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to get polls. <laughs> this would be a really great poll idea for your social media channels. Uh, what's your favorite way to explore the green spaces in your community? Share a video of it. Uh, go out to parks. Try, try to do it early in the morning so you're not going to die. I think it's called brown space now. Brown space now instead of green space. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> but share a video of that. Oops. And All right. the last one is what are some of the reasons uh, your buyers are moving right now? Uh, we've all heard it. It is a fantastic time to get deals on homes. Builders are throwing crazy money at us. Uh, sellers are wanting to sell still, and they are negotiating. So share those tips, tricks, and ideas out with your sphere. And now to Rich. <laughs> Hey, uh, success, success, success. Store, uh, list all these tools that we got. They all work, right? They all work. Social media, we got a success story with uh, David Campos here. He posts like crazy. Didn't you, you just posted something on a new building huddle? Yeah. What I, happened with that? So uh, the introduction was, uh, I was saying, if you're looking to move to the new Samsung location and want a new build, and a guy DM'd me and he was like, I'm actually looking to move to the new Samsung location. So I would be interested in a new build. <clears throat> so yeah, it was like a probably like six days after releasing the video. And uh, that's the first person that's reached me out so far ever since I started like a month ago, really going crazy. Yeah, so social media. Gets <laughs> I was over at the park the other day and I was just going around talking to everybody I could and, and all of a sudden, I see this frisbee in the back, and it kept getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I'm thinking, why is that getting bigger? Then it hit me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we already had uh, dad jokes. <laughs> we already had a. a uh, I don't think it was a joke. <laughs> I don't actually happen. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, we already had a success story. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Kim Shelton. Who says it's not a normal market? Put up a sign. 1.4 million. Boom. So, right? <laughs> Within four days. Actually, I think on the on it MLS. The show zero. It was the well, they asked the same day, day, so. day, but technically the contract is. Yeah. yeah. So, how about that for a success, right? So. Don't let anybody tell you it's not a normal market. Success? Sorry? Either of you. Oh. You always have one. <laughs> on the way on the way here today, a guy who I thought was never gonna get his wife to sell their house decided to sell when he called me as I was pulling in. I almost didn't answer the phone. 
now I gotta listen. <laughs> That's one of the most overlooked tools, I think, is your phone. Answer your phone, folks. <laughs> Answer your phone because if you don't, and they go, okay, I'll call the next guy on the list. All right. I pulled Here. a Ken this uh, week. What's, what's that, that mean? mean? Did you get to the hospital? Again? No, no, but I did buy a car. And so we are sitting in the financial. I'm, I'm bored at this point. We've been there like what four hours. You know, I just want this over with and done. Like I really want this car, but if we have to go through this much longer, I'm gonna be done. Anyway, so he asked me. Well, I had my JB Goodwin shirt on for one thing. So anyway, he asked me about JB Goodwin, and he's at the end of the thing. I, he said, "Well, my wife wanted to sell when it was hot, and we they live over in Berry Creek, but not in a subdivision, kind of a country with some land." And he said, but I didn't know where to go. So I said, no. And um, I said, well, yeah, that, that was a thing. And so at the end of the whole thing, he said, hey, I want your card. So I whipped out a card and gave it to him. So. All right, yeah, So I have some uh, past clients that were interested in buying investment property, like more investment property. And uh, Kevin was doing the beef free barbecue thing. So I was like, hey, um, why don't you come to that? And then there's going to be a lender there. You can talk to them. And then after afterwards, I followed up with them. And they were like, hey, we decided that we actually don't want more investment property. We would like to buy a personal loan. And then they're <laughs> like, but I don't know if we're going to be able to qualify. And I was like, well, you know, you have all these assets now. So if you wanted to trade one for another, we could do that. So I sent them comps on updated values because they were like, oh, but we missed the market to sell, right? And I was like, no, it's still pretty good. So uh, they have an appointment with him on Thursday to discuss, like, if they could move some pieces or sell something to buy their water. Hey, so. Of course, that's another tool with, with, with Premier Lending and Kevin. People think, hey, I. Uh, I don't think I can qualify or the rates are too high or whatever. I'm telling you, they can do magic. They can move numbers around. They can make it work, whether it's whatever plan it is. So if they're saying, well, I don't think, what's this? Hey, let me have Kevin give you a call. All right. I don't even tell them, hey, would you like, here's Kevin's number, right? Why don't you give him a call? I tell them, do you mind if I give Kevin your number? and then he can call you all right that way we're sure not to lose that lead we're sure not to lose that lead okay anybody else have a good story anybody go to the park this weekend no? <laughs> uh phone duty phone duty work i uh, yesterday got a call it was a, a lease we i think like 10 minutes after and you were actually next to me yeah <laughs> We set the appointment, set the applications, and they were like, yeah, we want to rent for a year, and then afterwards we're going to buy. But the house was disgusting because it wasn't ready yet, and I left with, like, 30 fleas on my Oh! oh. <laughs> it works, but... Yeah! <laughs> Tank. <laughs> Leave on a good note. Listen up. Hey. Hey. So I had an open house in Hollywood last month. It was a listing that was two point six million. It was a quick listing. We tried to figure out whatever was going on. And the day before the open house, I spent a few hours in front of the UPS store passing out some invitations and trying to talk to people and bring them to the open house. A month later, I was here with Jerry the other day, and then I don't know where I received a message. Hey, Maya, this is your open house. Uh, is the house still for sale? And now we were talking about this home and other homes. And a month later, this person just, I don't know where I came back and, hey, let's talk about it. So. That's Here awesome. Working on this thing. Right. She actually didn't believe it. She's like, is this a scam? And I'm like, what do you mean a scam? She's like, well, I passed out flyers in front of UPS. And they're like, I'm like, no, it's not a scam. Like, you gave them a flyer. Answer it. You can't hurt by texting, right? They can't come through the phone. So, so you're just going to go and do an open house by an open house. And that's it. You walk the neighborhood. Go to UPS store. And the flyers, great job, great yeah. job, yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen. <laughs>
think it, it was uh, very effective. I have an agent respond and said, I normally don't, you know, circle back and delete these reverse prospecting, but my client, this is only one of two houses they like in the last several months. So I'm going to circle back to them and call them the price that it was showing. So just had a success with that. Right. Right. We see all these things come in. Don't just figure that it's just a scam or don't figure that it's just a waste of time. There's a reason why that reverse prospecting is in there, right? And it does work. Does it work all the time? No, nothing works all the time. But they work. Everything works sometimes. Yeah. I was watching our, our Bible channel, HTTV, and I saw <laughs> an agent recommend that someone follow up with someone that showed interest and i had had someone that had gone to my georgetown house twice so i called the agent and i said come on what do we need to do to make a deal and they had a house the buyers had a house they hadn't even put on the market yet and i'm like it's okay i've got nothing else on the books come on <laughs> and i thought this was a long shot but they sold their house quickly it's already closed. It, it went in 30 days. It was amazing. So follow up on people who show interest. Get those numbers. Say, what can we do to make a deal? Yeah. yeah. Let's get it done. All right. Good job, folks. Keep up the success. All right. Thank you. Pam. Oh, me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dabbing with Molly. I was. Okay, I'm like, hey, guys. How's it going? So um, for those that are going to cover farming, and so we've actually got a class coming up this Thursday at our North Mopac office going over Remind. So for y'all that, that don't know a lot about how that app works, and there's a lot of different things you'll have. We're going to go over how to farm, how to um, how to use it, um, go over farming and campaigns, how to do CMAs, uh, new properties, how to engage with your clients through the app. There's just a lot of different things that y'all can use that for and so if you want to come to the class today this Thursday at our North Mopac office, we'd love y'all to come and join us. We have another class that's going to be here at y'all's office next Thursday. Um, we're going to be going over our app, Austin Title Agent One. Um, for the newer agents that don't know about it, it's a buyer seller net sheet, but we're doing some updates on it starting September 1st. You'll be able to do investment stuff on there. So um, and there's all sorts of they're doing more social media content information that's going to be on there. And so if y'all don't know enough about it or want to learn some more, please come to our class. We'll be here. We'd love to see you guys. Um, yes, one. That investor plan that I gave them comps for their properties, I used the um, the seller net estimator. To oh, yay. Just that on a couple of their properties. It's very helpful. It's a really useful tool. We've got a lot of different tools that we have for you guys to use, but this is one of my favorites for sure. Um, also, pop by ideas. Um, Memorial Day is coming up. I can happily give you guys some cards to go and pop by some of your clients. Um, we also have uh, what else is coming up. There's some other things coming up, holidays and stuff. But if y'all have any ideas that y'all want to run past me, I'm happy to go through them and help you guys with those. Um, appreciate you guys. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we'll give Kevin a minute. To... And while we're giving Kevin a minute, we get the question, Rich, Kim, we were talking about this morning before the meeting. Like, where do I get a net sheet? That's the one number one question. What, what's a net sheet? Where do I get a net sheet? So for all of those that have asked that question, you need to go to that Title I class because that's where the net sheets are. Okay? okay. Well, good morning, everybody. I wanted to show up today to tell you I did not abandon you. I'm still here. I still work here. Um, That's so, debatable. Yeah, I arrived. <laughs> work is debatable. Um, Couple of quick shout outs before I forget. Um, Swan, where yet? We have a closing this week, so be ready for that. Megan and I have a closing this week as well, so um, good success there. Um, I've actually heard from quite a few people in the last 10 days since I've been gone. Um, Kelsey, Anna Montiel, Luis, Laura Hoven. Um, I've heard from, where the people the week before? Uh, Gabe Gutierrez, um, Ken called me with an agent question the other day. So keep reaching out, keep calling for questions. And Ken's deal wasn't even, it wasn't even like to refer a client. It was just a question of, hey, what was the question? Their lenders, yeah. Their, yeah. Their, their lenders doing this, does this sound right or is this normal? Um, yeah. So it's just kind of a quick review of what was going on. Um, We've got the lender rebate program going on right now. If you have a client who gets an app in before the end of the month, they'll have a $1,500 uh, reduction in closing costs. 
we'll make them feel good inside and let them pick if they want us to go to a rate buy down or waive the lender fees or however they want to paint that picture they're going to get fifteen hundred dollars and we'll let them put it toward whatever they so choose but the reality is it just goes towards the bucket of cash to close so um that's going on till the 31st and then we have the uh, credit class going on Thursday from 11 to 12. And I actually, um, they were wanting an RSVP that I didn't know about. Can I get a quick raise of hands for people that assume you will be attending for the credit class on Thursday from 11 to 12? Real quick. One, two, right. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, ten eleven. 12, 13, 14. They were hoping to have 15. So we will have, we'll have, have it. Have it. If you can, Sharon, right. please do. Uh, we Reverse will. Reverse time renewals, these two things don't count. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know much about CE, so. It's very hard to wait, so everybody needs to have it. But it is a CE class. I guess if it's not your first time around, um, we will have a little bit of food afterwards since it ends at noon. Um, and they wanted to make sure that we had a, about 15 people that way they brought enough material and we know how much food to bring. So if everybody can show up, that'd be great. Um, and you are allowed to bring clients. I did find out if you have a client that wants to come in or people that want to come sit in with you, even if it's not necessarily if they need credit repair, but they just, I don't know, you want to build rapport with your client and bring them along for the day. Not here, but you can they bring them to the credit repair yeah. class. House masters is not so, here, but they have a slide um, for their class. That's right. Otherwise, $2. rates are still riding around around the seven mark um we've actually been i would say fairly consistent in the market it hasn't really fluctuated a tremendous really amount um we've kind of been reading some projections that we're getting closer to you know the election time is what think people huh? think is going to be the heaviest determination on where rates go and if you think about it the election is really not that far change off. Or so you know we're kind of looking at sub 12 months almost so um we still keep Closing deals every month in the sevens. People are still buying houses. People are still selling houses. So don't let it slow you down. I did get some material, some media for kind of putting on paper, um, you know, old price point with lower interest rate versus new price point. We have to submit any of that stuff through our corporate to make sure that the numbers are all appropriate when it involves anything that has a percentage on it for interest rate. Then they have to go through the APR thing. So that will be coming out. Um, and then I also want to get with you on, we're going to be doing a 1031 exchange class. And then Dave and I are going to come in here in the next month or so. And we're going to talk about interest rates, what we see when we price them, show you how they fluctuate. That way we can get a little more on, on plane about when, when I talk about interest rates, that way you guys can understand a little more of when I say the bond market took a dip today, or we're up 50 basis points or. I want to kind of help you guys understand what that stuff means in relation to the actual rate and to kind of also help you understand how much rates can fluctuate throughout a day a week and how locking works we just want you to see rates the way we do so dave and i'll be doing a class we just need to figure out what days you either don't have stuff or maybe we can double up um real quick show of hands who's interested in 1031 exchange awesome okay so a lot perfect okay um yes are you qualified to hold the escrow on those what's that are you qualified your business to hold the escrow on 1031 exchanges the answer is no okay. <laughs> they have a uh a, i'm not teaching a the company class. yeah there's yeah. a company okay. that comes yeah. in teaches the class there was a gentleman who yeah. taught it for nicole Carl over Pikes. at yep. westlake and okay. so he's going to come over yeah not me i'm just the one who found him and he will come teach all about it I know this much about 1031 exchange. It's extremely complicated. It's so not, it's, it's not, not that complicated. Not that complicated. Don't get you yeah. buy but, something, you pick something out, you buy it. That's yes. it. There's a but, there's an escrow company. That's the, uh, in so yeah, many so days. We'll have that coming up in the next month. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't include closing. 30 second elevator objection handling remarks for this morning. They were blasting out. Interest rates are 7.5. What do you tell a client when you say the interest rates are already 7.5 is too high? <laughs> if your client comes at you and says, well, I really don't want to buy in the market right now because the interest rate's too high, they say, I, I know we all hear it on the media that you know rates are a lot higher than they used to be. What's your ideal interest rate? Let them give you a number and then say, hey, 
I want you to give my lender a call and see how much of a difference that that actually makes on a payment. That opens the window for me to start having the conversation, for you to have to talk a little less about it. And really, we can get people to understand that when they, when they oh, I really want to be in the six and a half range, that's where I need to be to buy. And we show them that it's like maybe $80 difference, maybe 100 And then we start showing them what that means in a year's time versus renting. Um, so I would use the arguments of what's your ideal rate? Let them give you a number and then say, hey, let's let's get you in touch with my lender. And so we can look at the difference between those two points and see once what that would matter in your in your uh, monthly. Additionally, you can just come back and say, I know that interest rates are a little bit higher than they used to be right now, but because of my last few, because of this, in my last few deals, whether you've done them or not, whether your team did them, just in my last few deals, I had eighty five hundred dollars in concessions, ten thousand in concessions. We got you know title and escrow paid for. Um, we got it at a lower purchase price and really just lay in with the concessions and the lower purchase price and the fact that like making a nice client, they're going to the table with $1,500 in the DPA program. Never, ever, ever, ever would have won a contract 12 months ago. Nobody would have looked at it. We gave them what they were asking for. We got 10,000 in seller concessions. They gave more once we had the inspection. That stuff does not happen in a, a preferred rate market. Mm -hmm. So use those examples of people because um, not everybody needs to move in a high rate market, but those who still need to move can. And it can still be a great deal because interest rate is the only thing that you can change later on down the road. Everything else is set. So uh, not 30 seconds, but. Uh, house prices aren't here today, but they do have a class um, on Thursday, Thursday as well from 12 to 1. Um, and it's evolving residential codes. We've all heard like, oh, this is out of code or it's grandfathered in or what does that mean? That's what this class is going to be about. So make sure to mark your calendars and come in for that one. And then we have farmers. Uh, James here. I'm going to be real quick because I know we're running short on time. Two things real fast. One, I got asked about those uh, 3D printed homes last time I was here. I did get confirmation from underwriting that we can write those. We just need to get the material breakdown and what they're being made out of. It's usually it's concrete or stucco or a mixture of. Uh, and so we just need to know what that is. The second thing was um, the fire that happened recently up in Cedar Park triggered a whole bunch of calls that came in and it caused a whole lot of questions that started uh, coming in and people were asking a whole bunch of different things. Hey, I've got this house. It's three, four million dollars. Can you help? Yeah, no problem. Uh, hey, we do this. Oh, I didn't know you do that. Hey, I've got this house out in rural area. It's a, a trailer. Can you write that? Yeah, no problem. Hey, I've got this $9 million house out in this part of Austin. Can you write that? Yeah, no problem. People didn't know that we had all these options because we don't just write through farmers. We write through AIG, we write through Chubb, we write through Travelers, we write through all different kinds. I have about 50 different carriers that I can write through. It just depends on the situation as to what I use that carrier for. So, uh, and we write all the way down to as, as simple as a renter's policy, right? That simple renter's policy that's 80 to $100 a year. Um, so that someone's personal belongings are covered in that fire, um, that hopefully everybody had all those uh, things covered, kept, right? So that is really what I wanted to share with you today is that um, whatever the situation calls for, we have a solution in our office uh, to make sure that that's going to be met. Um, and we would love to answer any questions that you have as you're going through that process with your clients. And it is as simple as that. Is there any questions anybody has? Fantastic. Let's move on. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, what do you got? Oh, weatherman. Weatherman. <laughs> Farmer man. Weatherman. All hats. Look at this within the last seven days. Read. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I will read it for you since you're all children. A new active listing is 941 within the last seven days. Price decreases. Look at that. 1622 price decreases in the last seven days. Um, price increases 162. Again, it's back to the new builds, um, most of them. 
back on the market 201 active under contract 443 pending 461 closed 772 withdrawn 233 expired 99 and on hold back to expired 99 and on hold 134 I don't know what this means to you but it means something to me does anybody understand expired there's 99 just so you know so we do expired listings here people anyway get out there get those listings um this week i did georgetown isd active i was like is there 700 active listings in georgetown currently exactly 700. i was like that's a weird number but okay <laughs> Ranging from two hundred fifty thousand dollars, it's an eight hundred and like fifty square foot house, but it's almost on a half an acre. Um, two hundred fifty thousand, and it's not a teardown. And the highest is two point three six six million, which happens to be one of our own Vanessa Simon. <laughs> so, uh, active under contract or pending, that's two hundred sixty eight. Uh, sold in the last 30 days, 179, as opposed to last year, 200 and 304 in 2020. Sold year to date, 1440, 1507 last year, and 1621, 2020. Days of inventory, 118.47. This is what I found very interesting in Georgetown. Average current house price is 529,996. It's not much lower than last year, 570. I, I have been seeing a lot of a difference, like $100,000 difference. This isn't much of a difference to 57626. But look at 2020, 352, 200, sunny skies for the rest of the week. Just making sure you guys are paying attention. We want rain. We really want rain. We really anyway, want rain. Get rain. Active days on market 82 as opposed to last year, 18 and 75. So we're really not that far off from 2020. So, what does that mean for everyone? <laughs> Business is still going. Business is, there's 700 active listings out there. You guys know what to do. You got buyers, get them out to Georgetown. Yes. You know, if a lot of those are new builds. The seven like, Georgetown, yes, there yeah, is a, quite a few. Because of Farmer Ranch and. Mm -hmm. There's quite a few, yeah. Mm -hmm. out all, all that stuff new like builds that. are a big thing right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyways. You guys have questions about market or what you need to do to get those listings, get those buyers, get them into Georgetown. There's 700 active listings right there. There's plenty of houses. So good luck to everyone. All right. All right. A lot more today. You guys look great. <laughs> <laughs> Reading and using video CMA with Jennifer Bowman. That will be tomorrow from 11 12. Join Jennifer to learn how to create video CMAs and ways to use uh, it to build your business. There's so many ways to reach your sphere. Follow up with past clients and enhance your business with personal touch of a video CMA. And then coming up is MLS Global Apps for Sabor and Avor. The three keys of real estate practice, preview, and talk set, and converting open house guests into clients. And then I know I like to start my week this way. I think you guys do too. Monday morning breakthrough with uh, Jill Whitaker. Uh, she worked in the military, youth rotation uh, in Germany for three years. She joined the military and became a C 130 navigator. Uh, doing drop off, uh, doing airdrops and transport missions out of New Yokota Air Base in Japan. Uh, returned to San Antonio to be a navigator instructor. She works uh, during last years as an office manager at the U.S. and Board Academy. And, but she decided to get into real estate. In her first year in real estate, she had 28 pieces of her lot, but they've only had one. So, uh, <laughs> and then 14 on the buy side transaction and one sell side transaction. And then 24,800 in the US military number rebates. And then uh, I hope you guys are sticking around today, right after this meeting. Uh, we will have things in here. But uh, tell Annie, tell me. 
So this is just to sharpen your communication skills. So join JB and Tony for a live session on importance being strong communicator in real estate. You know, I need to work on it, so I will be here. Um, learn which communication skills are critical for your success and how JB children. JBG tools are designed to assist you. There's lots of tools available to you guys, so be here after the after week. Do you have one more? No, no, we have any. And I have this box uh, probably this last week in MLS, so he's a great teacher. He actually works um, often with the awesome board of realtors. And um, this will not be recorded. So if you guys want to be here, please record this. Um, welcome to Special. the MLS of the Teacher introducing Central Texas New Multiple Listening Service. So we do have a new app that's available to you guys. I don't know if you guys are already. Um, so unlock MLS, stay connected, and engage with leads and clients from where you are by downloading the app. I hope you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, just listed fire needs, lease needs, who needs what? Raise your hand. I'm coming soon in Sun City. Um, it's a 3 2. And here's the thing it, what makes it super unique is it backs up to one of the biggest green um, space areas that there is there. And it has a cocktail pool. Oh, <laughs> if anybody knows somebody who wants to my, my cowboy pool, but Maybe. cocktail pool, I got it. It's just a wonderful but it sounds better to call it. It's fungible. It's fungible. It's just small. It's not like a cool pool. It does, it does have like a, a nice waterfall in the little area where you can sit. So, but it doesn't have it. It's, yeah, it's not that. Um, we're still working on that. It will be over four and under a million. <laughs> Vanessa. Um, I think you all remember a conference at Row Lane in Floorville in-house agent trying to sell his home. We ended up taking it last year. So it's currently tenant occupied. We're ready to sell. He's leasing it for 2,800 months. It's over. Um, so if you want if you have any buyers from Florida, Colin Deborah, very big house, uh, let me know because he's been in off market right now. So you can hold off market. It's a great little investor opportunity slash <laughs> available to move in next year. But I also have a opportunity. I'm also great for first time home buyers. I just had a seller uh, this last week. And it's a three bedroom, two bath, one story, little house and block house. So it was his first home, and I intended a big investment. He's from the United States. So um, it's super cute. Uh, it's about, I'm going to say, 1,800 square feet. It's going to be quick to mention all that. You're getting estimates on painting your stuff right now. You could get a deal if you don't want all that done. Uh, but it's probably going to be listed around 330 because it's one of the smaller houses in a great community. So it's a great first time buyer and investor to just get with me and come up with these. 330, that's a great price. Emma. What's this one? Oh. Emma. Block down 30. Yeah. All right, Emma. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Emma makes me on Lane Street if anybody wants a one bedroom, 2400. They've got a lot of awesome accommodations. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, uh, I have a listing in Hutto. It's a four bedroom, three bathroom with a bonus flex space, which could easily be a fifth bedroom, office, et cetera. Um, it also has five extra feet of storage in the garage. Uh, built in 2019, it is pristine, absolutely clean, beautiful, ready to move in. Uh, we just price reduced to 425. Um, so bring your buyer. Yeah. I'm looking for a lease need three two um near Stony Point under two thousand. If anyone knows. Okay. Those. Uh, I also have a listing going live on Sunday. Um, it's called Sunset Lane. Okay. Um, it's about two hundred and fifty thousand square feet. Okay. Um, the price point is around two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Um, it's about two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. Um, the price point is around two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. All right, but it doesn't have a punch bowl. <laughs> 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 Got a bathtub. <laughs> okay, I have a new listing 
in South Austin in the Manchester area. It's um, within a cell phone investor. I just listed it. I already have two offers. They're not exactly where I want them to be. It's a fabulous price at $398,888. Uh, the house is probably a teardown. Somebody could go in and fix it, but it does have some slight structural issue just off the kitchen area. Otherwise, it's solid. But it offers them a How far does it go? people who want to tear down the house and build another house and a second one on the lot. And it is some uh, residential place, so they can't do that. There happens to be a giant. In the front, so um, they won't be easy to put two houses on that lot, but it looks like a couple of people can. And we are probably going to make a decision tomorrow. Oh, no, so, if you know any investors, have them go by there or take them by today. Yeah. It's 4603 Richmond Avenue, um, not far off, you know, Ben White. It's a beautiful lot. The right lot there. is 9,008 square feet. And there are, I'm going to say, at least a third of the houses on that street. That's exactly what they're doing. They're tearing down the house and building either like a double townhome type thing or, or two houses. Mm. All right. Thank you, Norma. Got it. All right. I got several properties that are on the market. So I have two listings uh they're adjacent to each other two lots 1.55 acres in whitewater springs and bertram that are for sale for 135 and 150 there's already a water tap on that property so if someone wants to buy both they can you know it's be a, what that's almost 300 000, 285 um, with the water tap so it'd be over three acres um i have a listing in huddo still it's priced at 162 a square foot um with the main bedroom master bed primary, whatever it's called nowadays, downstairs. <laughs> uh, so this one, it was built in 2020 as well. It's pretty clean. It's got three beds, three baths, 24, uh, 51 square foot. So it has like a pretty big open floor plan. And then it has a uh, loft upstairs as well and an office. So it's uh, still on the market, 399. Um, please find somebody for that house. <laughs> <laughs> Priced pretty well. Um, and then I have a lease listing in uh, Georgetown, 129 River Hill. It's Georgetown Morningstar. Um, we've price reduced to 22.15 a month. And that one's also a 3 3, 19.50. It backs up the green space. There's trails. It's walking distance to a pool. Um, so it's a pretty good spot. Liberty Hill Awesome. I still have my listing in Spider Town. It's a three two with two flex spaces. Uh, we reduced it to 450 now, and uh, the sellers have a contingent uh, to offer on a house, so we need to get a buyer. All right, great. We got another listing. I mean, it is an investor opportunity. You want me to yell in this power? Yeah, <laughs> louder. <laughs> um, three bad, two bad, just over 1600 square feet. If you could sell it off market for 190, you will take that for the close. Okay, great. All right. I've got a condo on the eighth floor of a 24 uh, tower overlooking Rainy Street, 674 whopping square feet, and uh, it goes for 2400 a month. Okay, I see Terry. Um, yeah, I have a four two tail just um, the sellers who can pay four spend for anything with wood floors, extended patio. It's an Emory crossing. Emory crossing is something that has a huge new amenity center. It's like two blocks. Great. Um, for you guys are in four. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah. I still have my uh, lease listing in Steiner. Okay. Anyway, there's a uh, uh, three, two and a half, uh, two living areas. Uh, Two dining areas. We have a plush pool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, so uh, bring me somebody who would like to rent this. Uh, we are at the time of uh, three thousand one hundred ninety-five. Okay. Anybody else? What else? 
JD. I have a great Ford Escape. <laughs> but if you have a great Ford Escape, then you need to escape. When you come see me. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we can sell it. <laughs> Potentially. All right. Uh, that is it, y'all. Have a great day. And throw over to JD McCombie out. Are they speaking? Or are they doing the class now? Okay. Oh. 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 Oh.